The cars, in the meantime, were loaded with bombs and machine gun ammunition for the planes at Aslito Field. With everything ship-shaped, the train moved out. This was D plus 12. The first trip was far from uneventful. This Tunaville trolley was a poor traveler. It had to stop at every crossroad while men shoveled the dirt off the rails. And it no sooner got underway again than it had to stop for newly damaged track. Or perhaps the engine got thirsty. Fortunately, the road crossed the tracks at a number of places so the water trucks could meet the train. All told, this first trip over a distance of six miles took about 12 hours, a lot of time and effort. But those in command knew what they were doing. On one trip, this train carried a load that would have required a great many trucks. Later on, the trains were longer and more heavily loaded, and the trip took considerably less time. With the railroad to the airport in operation, our air support became much more effective. Carrier-based planes had been using the field intermittently since D plus five to take on fuel and ammunition. Now it was possible to bring in P-47s and send up a whole squadron at a time. Still, our supply lines were subjected to constant shelling and nightly bombing, and service troops had to dig themselves in just like everyone else. They had to post their security details against snipers and infiltrating Japs. But living conditions gradually improved. Sometimes the troops could even find a quiet place to eat their K rations. After a couple of weeks, when the engineers got their water purification unit set up, there was even enough water to wash in. As the fighting moved north, the supply dumps on the lower part of the island bulged with food and fuel and ammunition. The coral roads were heavy with traffic moving to the front. Among the hardest working service troops was a duck company. As they unloaded the last of the supplies from the ships which brought the invasion troops to Saipan, they were able to spend more time on the proper maintenance of their vehicles. During the first hectic days of the campaign, these vehicles worked day and night. The crews barely had time to fill them with gas and oil. In spite of this beating, the ducks gave remarkably little trouble. Now they were given a thorough overhauling. Our initial landings on Saipan were made on the southwest shore. After cutting the island in two, the assault troops moved up the western shore and captured the chief city, Garapan, or what there was left of it. Then they took Tanapeg Harbor, the chief harbor of the island. It was littered with sunken Jap ships, on many of which there were still nests of snipers. But they were gradually cleaned out and the harbor made suitable for shipping. And the Japs in the north were forced into a smaller and smaller area until they were finally wiped out and the island officially declared secure on D plus 22. Now the service troops had a new job to convert the island into a powerful forward base to support future operations. Within a matter of weeks, a great floating pier was thrust out into Tanafeg Harbor. The huge pontons were brought in by the Navy, and the pier was constructed by Army engineers. The larger Navy cargo ships could now unload directly into waiting trucks. A vast river of supplies began to pour in, supplies of every conceivable type. There was fuel for the planes and machines, and ammunition for the guns. There was food and supplies for the men who would operate them. And there was heavy equipment, like bulldozers, and sheep's foot rollers, and shovels. This heavy equipment was used to repair the damaged Jap airports, and to construct new ones of our own. Saipan in our hands was a tremendous advantage. It marked our closest advance to the Japanese mainland. It was an arrow pointed at the heart of our enemy.
A few months later, newspapers all over the world made perfectly clear just what we did with Saipan. What kind of a base we built. What a tremendous job was done by our service troops. On 24 November, the headlines read, B-29s from Saipan bomb Tokyo. Saipan invaded 15 June. Tokyo bombed 24 November. Five months to make a home for these giants. Five months to steal an island from the Japs and hit them over the head with it.